All right, folks, another edition of Wins Weekly starts now. Jay Klein Connect here along with head coach Scott Langer. Uh, coach, before we get into the weekend, I just wanted to, me to mention, you know, the uh, Spire Foundation Wings Bowling Bash went on yesterday. Great event, a huge fundraiser for the uh, Spire Foundation, but the Wings involvement is just always a lot of fun. Um, they actually gave me the mic so I could chirp the boys a little bit. It was kind of fun. But one of the things I wanted to point out was the community involvement and how important that is. I had many people come up to me and talk to me about how kind and patient the players were with the Aspire individuals, um, you know, and how, how nice they were to each of them as they bowled with them and so on. A couple of guys really stood out. I, I, I got to really give a, a shout out to Landon Parker and Jackson Gross Didier and Broderick Williams. They took a lot of time and spent actually about 45 minutes extra more than anybody else did with with their bowling partners and so on and really helped them and it was it was really fun to watch and it did not go unnoticed the you know, the people that were either bowling or even people just watching definitely saw all of that and that's really important to uh, you know for the the culture and the community involvement in you know we talk about it different events but something like that especially i think really stood out and that's uh, something that i'm certainly proud of i would imagine that you are too yeah for sure um you know junior hockey prepares these guys throughout the season to to understand how important it is to give back to the community and to be involved in the community and obviously in the beginning of the year it's it's uh it's fun to watch because it's just like the game of hockey they they have to develop it sure of course this season so our front office does a really good job of getting those guys into in the spots where they can learn to flourish in those type of situations so I mean the Aspire thing's been great year after year and uh, it's always at the end of the season so you get to see our guys uh in the community you know doing their best at the at the pinnacle of of what they learned throughout the course of the year dealing with the community yeah yeah i mean i think that that's a great point because if it were at the beginning of the season maybe the interaction wouldn't be quite the same because they're a little nervous or whatever but they've learned how how to do that and again the, the patience they showed and everything was really amazing patrick o'connell highest score for the wings 160 shout out to oc um back to the weekend of hockey a weird friday night when the, when the building was pretty quiet not a lot of people in it obviously with the the inclement weather that we had here but a 5-1 loss penalty kill allowed two goals on five uh, five power play opportunities for Minot power play went 0 of 2 gave up an early goal and like you and I talked about on Saturday night it really kind of deflated the bench it seemed like and you know things just went Minot's way the rest of the night really yeah they played inspired um, the goal against was was hard just because we spent so much time on the play that they executed to score the goal so that, that's a, frust it's a frustrating thing for everybody but we just never seem to get our legs going throughout that course of that game yeah well and we move along I mean again that's all we can really do at that point is move on to Saturday night and a more inspired game on Saturday night the boys seemed like you know there was a lot more physicality there were a lot of things that were a lot better I guess overall on Saturday night you come you have a 1-0 lead uh, through uh, through the second period gave up two late goals power play was 104 penalty kill was perfect on four chances uh, but still not the outcome that you would have liked for sure and especially as we get down the stretch here towards the of the regular season these points are very important as a bit of a heartbreaker but um, a better game at least saturday night yeah a better game but you know we uh like everything else this season is when you make a mistake teams are making you pay and you know we made a mistake on two face-offs and both ended up on a goal um you know and those are situations where you really got to mentally be ready to go um but you know the, their game winning goal they went 200 feet basically to to, to score the, the game winning goal um, and you know that's just like I said the, the, I think uh, our guys are gripping their stick a little too tight right now and, and, and making some errors that they, they normally wouldn't make as a player and uh, it's costing us games interesting point I was actually going to ask you about that when you're in a winning streak there's pressure to win um, but then when you're you know needing points and things aren't going your way there's pressure to win in a different kind of way um, and we talk about that grip and the stick stuff where people, you know, are maybe trying to do a little too much or they're a little nervous about this or that or whatever else. How do you overcome that? Well, I think you have to do it through your preparation and you have to have good preparation throughout the week, give you confidence going into the weekend. And, you know, at some point you, you just got to say F it, right? And let your hair down and let your hair down and, and just lay it on the line. I mean, it's 
that's been going on here for for week after week and you know you you see teams winning below us they're finding ways to to win games and they know they need to get those points this time of the year it can't be any different for our group and right. um, we've just found ways to 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 lose games yeah um, and we'll run through the standings here in just a moment too because um, as you mentioned you know Bismarck coming up some, with a, a big sweep of North Iowa over the weekend they are not eliminated nobody's eliminated it's it's kind of a really crazy uh, standings in the Central Division I, I wanted to ask a little bit about what you can take I know we often talk about not dissecting a win taking them where you get them and so and so on but can you learn more and I'm not trying to make it sound like that's a good thing of any in any way but maybe a positive spin can you learn more from a loss than you can from a win because of the fact that you basically do dissect it and try to figure out what went wrong well I think you can um, I think a good athlete uh, a top-end competitor will learn from from their mistakes and some guys don't learn they just bury their head and, and and they pout about it and those are the guys that don't go very far when when it's said and done so uh, I think you can learn both ways I mean when you're winning things are all going great you're feeling good about yourself and your confidence is there and and you feel like you're you, you can't be beat you know but when you're you get beat consistently it's hard to crawl out of that and yeah. you know teams are coming in licking their chops and uh, they're playing with confidence. I mean, the team we, we played over the weekend, they're an average hockey team. Um, they've, they've proven that, and they did a great job over the weekend elevating their game and, and finding four points in our building. Yeah, going into the weekend, head to head, the advantage was you know, was with the wings, but uh, yeah, my not uh, definitely feeling that confidence of going into Saturday for sure. Well, I mentioned standings, folks. Austin is at the top of the Central Division with uh, you know they have clinched 75 points. St. Cloud with 64 points in second place. North Iowa now in third with 61 points. Then Minot with 58 points. The wings dropped to fifth with 58 points, but a tiebreaker there going to Minot and Bismarck at the bottom of the division, but only two points out. 56 points point mentioned that that they uh, found a way to beat to, to sweep North Iowa you know and the and regular season comes to a close Bismarck has another four against North Iowa who they just swept as I mentioned so you know they're feeling confident against that team Minot has Austin who has clinched maybe doesn't have a lot to play for they've got affiliate players coming in things like that and then the wings have a, a tough road ahead of them with a St. Cloud team that just beat Austin and is sitting in second place uh, you know and they're, they're a good hockey team now you're four and oh against them but haven't seen them since December 31st and prior to that it was it was October so I mean likely a very different team in a lot of aspects what what do you know about St. Cloud yeah they um, they're the top team in our division if you if you really look at what they've done here um, you know we since we've seen them I mean they did such a great job of, of developing into a, a top team and um, when you watch them on tape they're probably easy, easy, easily the top team in our division um, I'm not discrediting at all discrediting Austin by any means that no. a fantastic season uh, but I am saying that the job that Corey's doing and, and the players are doing in St. Cloud is very good and uh, you know we gotta find a way to beat them yeah. uh, you know it, it there, you know, the whole division's beatable. Everybody can beat anybody on any given night. Uh, we just have to play solid hockey. Yeah, um, you know, like you mentioned, I mean, St. Cloud, obviously, they have improved a lot. At the beginning of the season, they were in, struggling at the bottom of the division, and they have uh, climbed their way up to, to second place. And, and like I mentioned, to have uh, beaten beaten Austin, the, the number one team in the division this last weekend. So, again, tough tough task. What do you see as some keys? You know, you said you got to find a way to beat them. What, what, do they have any weaknesses that you can exploit or anything like that? Well, they're really good at net, and, and they have guys that can score goals. And we're going to have to be – opportune on the offensive side and and um, we're gonna have to be really good defensively we're gonna have to play a solid two and four game and then uh, just try to keep it keep it tight and and um, doesn't have to be pretty by any means it just has to be effective on the road this weekend back home here at the ODI Center against St. Cloud the following weekend wings basically playing for their playoff lives just like uh, everybody is well other than Austin right now uh, but, Coach, that's all I've got for you. We'll put this weekend behind and move forward to, to St. Cloud. Thanks, Jay. All right, folks, we'll be back with the second portion of Wings Weekly coming up after this. We're going to be here all day. Once upon the greatest of all times.
Who's this? It's Kyler Murray. Oh, Kyler. Kyler. Bring my phone to 6th Street. We gotta wrap this up. We're looking for Kyler! Just left. Shanae! I'll take those wings, though. Wanna catch the game? Yo, Josh, what's up? Yo, Shanae! Josh. To the film room! Yeah! Wow! Wrong quarterback. Can't even see the screen. Be does. Where's my phone? Wrong quarterback, bro. <sighs> to the greatest of all friends. To the greatest of all times. Buffalo Wild. Second portion of Wings Weekly continues now, and as usual, a player is joining me. This time it is Landon Steffen. And um, you're one of the most recent additions to this Wings team. So there's a lot of interesting points here. Uh, first of all, your high school season comes to a close. You end up with 32 goals, 35 assists. Those are some crazy numbers. I mean, you, you got to feel pretty proud about that, obviously, as uh, you know, you come over to, to junior hockey. I want to ask you about transitioning and all that kind of stuff, but that's a, that's a pretty amazing season that you, well, and your brother both had. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about your hockey start. Now, I have to do that with pretty much everybody because it's just interesting to know like where it came from. But in your case, I got a feeling it kind of, probably a big inspiration was your dad and having a twin brother. You're, you know, you got a, a built-in you know, uh, playmate, in a sense, when you're, when you're young and you start, you know, skating around on ponds or whatever else, how old were you? Uh, I think I started putting on skates when I was like three years old. And then, yeah, I just played ever since. Yeah, fell in love with it. So I got to ask, you know, having a brother, I would imagine, obviously, this, you know, same age, you're probably on the same teams and playing together all the way through yeah. your whole development of hockey, all the way through high school and everything else. That connection that, you know, not only obviously as brothers, but as teammates and all of that kind of stuff has got to be pretty special in its own right. But what is it like coming over to the Aberdeen Wings and not having that built-in support system and that person that knows your every move and all that kind of stuff? That's got to be kind of difficult. Yeah, it's obviously a jump, you know, like junior hockey's a lot faster. You know, I went from high school and I obviously had Luke on my line and he was a, a big contributor to my success for the season. But, uh, you know, now coming to the wings, you know, every guy's got talent. So, you know, I got other guys that can give me the puck. So, yeah, so far I've really enjoyed my time here and playing with good players. Yeah, you know, and it's funny because high school hockey, you know, I've talked to guys for years now, uh, you know, <laughs> about their transition from high school hockey. And a lot of times, you know, they might be a standout. You know, they're a captain of their team or whatever. And they get here and they're kind of like well I'm not seeing the minutes or whatever and it's like I even some people you know that I've talked with in the past I've kind of explained to them or had to explain to them early on in a season or maybe a family member whatever when they're confused about why they aren't starting right away or something it's like you're a star in high school yeah but everybody in this locker room was a star in high school so you know like it's a little different than high school however I will say that there is a, an asterisk there in a sense with Minnesota high school hockey because I feel like um, yeah, I don't think I'm, it's a stretch of the imagination to say that Minnesota high school hockey is a, a step above a lot of high school hockey around the around the country, much like Texas football or whatever else. Uh, so maybe not quite as much, but you mentioned it being a little bit more a, a faster game here uh, and probably a little more physical too, huh? Yeah, for the most part, a lot of physical. Like guys are a lot stronger, mm -hmm. you know, so not so much high school. But you're not one to shy away from that. Right away, I noticed <laughs> some pretty big reverse hits, and, and I think your very first game that you played in, you got the hit of the game. Yeah. So you're not uh, not one to be like, oh, intimidated by any of that, right? Yeah, right. All right. Well, um, I got to also ask you, you know, I know your dad uh, was a, a coach and coached you through much of your, your high school career. Um, what's it been like to kind of have to adapt to another coach and another coaching styles? Um, I mean, it hasn't been too much of a jump, to be honest. I mean, my first couple years of high school, I, I had a different coach as well, so I okay. kind of had to get used to that. But yeah, um, high school, definitely not as strategic as it is now. You know, coming here, you got to learn all different systems and different, uh, like, setups and stuff. So that's been, like, the biggest jump from coaching so far. I found that very interesting when I was when kind of reading up on you a little bit, or when you first got here, and I got to thinking about how it'd, it'd be, you know, when 
you have somebody that you're sitting at the dinner table with, you're t probably talking hockey or you know whatever, and it's always around you, there becomes that style, that coaching style or whatever that you get used to. And it would be kind of, seems like it would be kind of difficult to, to, uh, to get used to the, the change, but I'm glad to hear that there hasn't been a whole lot of that. Yeah. Do you get a lot, of, a lot of phone calls from him and stuff? Yeah. Breaking, breaking down the games? Every day, every, every game, every, every practice, how was practice, you know, it lets me know how I did in the game, what I need to get better on, and uh, yeah, he, he lets me know. See, that's an advantage in a way, but also a disadvantage in a way. Like, it's you, know, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, there, there are some hockey parents, of course, that, you know, have been big supporters, but maybe don't understand the game as well as like, your dad would, so they can't really break down your game quite yeah. as much. Yeah, right. um, let's see. Uh, another part of this transition into junior hockey, obviously, too, is living away from home. Yeah. Uh, your your career moving forward was always pretty much in the cities, you know, there being a, a Blaine native and, and a playing Roseville and so on. Uh, what's that been like? At first, it was, it was different, but since I've been here for a couple of weeks now, I've gotten close with some of the guys, so it's been a lot easier. It's, it's been pretty fun, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm amazed. You know, I mentioned this time and time again, but uh, you know, when guys come here from Finland or or Minsk, Belarus, and places like that, it just blows me away to think of what they're going through. Um, you know, as far as culture changes and everything like that. At least you don't have to worry about that. You That's know, that, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no language barrier or anything no. like that. At least. All right. Well, how about a little a little about uh, you know on away from the ice, the personality kind of stuff. Oh, do you have any any like hobbies or anything like that that you like to do? Any, a card guy or maybe a gamer oh I play a lot of video games yeah my parents don't really approve of it but you know, <laughs> I play a lot and then I like to golf a lot in the summer and hang out with my friends what is it about hockey and golf it just seems like the two <laughs> go so well together everybody golfs it seems like what do you suppose the, the similarities are <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure though maybe swinging the club yeah, yeah well, not, not very good but and, yeah, and there's not fun. there's no ice really in the you know so it's like well, okay true. although there I mean now there's year-round ice but but the hockey season is over, so it's something to do, you know, right. I guess. Do you outdoors, but I don't do any fishing or anything like that? Uh, I used to be a big fisherman. Yeah. Have not so much recently, but... Wings, uh, Wings and Aspire Foundation bowling bash yesterday. How'd you bowl? Oh, I'm terrible. <laughs> I think the first, first game, I bowled like a 66. <laughs> I think I, I heard you walking behind me walk, when you were leaving going, I think I'll stick with hockey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Started to laugh. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, how about, uh, what's, what, I, uh, what's your favorite food? Like, okay, not just a food, but like if you had a meal that was going to be your last meal that yeah. you could ever eat, what would it be? Uh, probably steak, well done. Oh, and, no, yeah, you're killing yeah, me. No. And then maybe like some mashed potatoes and maybe some green beans. Well done. You're, yeah. you're burning all the taste out of it. Okay, so now what about this? How about some weird food combinations? Like there's people that put like pickles and peanut butter together or chips on a sandwich or in a sandwich. Now maybe that's not quite so weird. I know some people that do that. But is there anything like that that might surprise people that you really like? Uh, I, I like french fries and ice cream. Ooh. Like you dip it in. I don't know if that's a weird one. But no, it, it's, that's weird. No, I, that's definitely I weird. personally enjoy that one. It definitely qualifies as weird. <laughs> right. However, I do know people that have Frosties or whatever from Wendy's. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I know people that do that. All right, uh, you cat dog guy. Do you have any pets at home? I'm a cat guy. Yeah. Yeah, I get a lot of crap for it, but I'm definitely a cat guy. <laughs> Two cats at home. <laughs> Why do you get crap for it? What's wrong with being a cat guy? Uh, people think it's weird. I don't know why. <laughs> Well, I, so it's still like a stereotypical that it can only be crazy cat ladies and you can't I, be. I crazy. guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, if you had a superpower, if you could pick any oh, of the superpowers, wow. what's it going to be? Probably to fly, get places faster. Yeah? Definitely. Okay, so follow-up question. If you could fly, but could only fly 10 miles per hour or run... 100 miles an hour definitely run really yeah i hate going slow <laughs> nice see i'm i'm going with the fly all day because i can go over water and whatever else there's no obstacles <laughs> but even though like i said you, you know being able to run that fast be pretty cool too okay well hey i know you guys are always very busy and of course this time of year taking care of your body and all those things are, are super important what's your game day routine look like what you know how do you go about preparing for a game um game day routine usually after morning skate get like a small workout in kind of a stretch mobility kind of thing and then you know go home get some food in me probably a nap and then come back to the rink and get a good another stretch and dynamic warm-up in with the team what's uh 
when it comes to like suey, are you a suey guy or are you kind of off on your own? Uh, I'm kind of off on my own. Yeah. I'm not very good, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how some, they, some of the guys get really into that. Oh, and it's not, that. it's not even just in the wings. I noticed even mine out were below me last yeah. weekend. I was watching them and I was like, they get crazy about that. Uh, but it, from what I understand, it's a pretty good warm up. Um, okay, so you've got St. Cloud coming up. You know, I was just talking with Coach about this, about the fact that they are a much improved team. Yeah. Uh, beginning of the year, you know, honestly, they they were struggling a little bit, and the Wings haven't seen them since they since 2022, literally since December 31st. So uh, this is a team that you guys haven't seen. Um, well, and the rest, even the, the guys that have been here from the beginning of the season, haven't seen it a long time. Yeah. Um, they've improved, and you guys coming off, on, honestly, kind of a struggle of a weekend. What do you have to do? You know, and Coach talked about playing inspired, to play and, you know, letting your hair down and just going having fun with it and just letting your talents shine and those kinds of things. What do you feel like the mentality needs to be going into St. Cloud? I mean, obviously, we got a couple of guys injured, and that, that sucks, but we're going to need guys to step up and we're just going to have to uh, come to the game and work as hard as we can and uh, dedicate ourselves to the system and uh, it's a player game yeah you know I was we'd hear about playing for each other and we talk often about the Avenue Wings being you know a family and having that passion and stuff heck I just pointed out before it's on the walls in here even you yeah. know that becomes a big thing too doesn't it wouldn't you I mean like when you're on the bench and you know like you know that it's not just about the the logo on your on your sweater but it's about the guys that are next to you too huh yeah definitely you got to play for the guys next to you I mean you got the older guys the O2s um, you're playing for them obviously it's their last year junior hockey and even we're playing for some of our guys that are injured playing for them well, going to be a, a tough road over the next four for sure, but you guys are certainly capable of coming up with some big games, so good luck against St. Cloud. Thank you. Again, I know you guys are busy, so I'll let you go here and won't keep any longer. I really appreciate you uh, you know, taking some time, though, to, to like, like I always tell people, like get to know the players. So when they watch you know, from the stands, you're in your gear, your helmet on and stuff, they don't even really get a chance to know what you look like, let alone yeah. that you eat ice cream and french fries together, so, <laughs> yeah. or that you're a crazy cat dad. Like Now, now people know that. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, the Wings, as I mentioned, are on the road this weekend against St. Cloud, and they, and they take on the Norsemen the 7th and 8th there in St. Cloud. And you can catch the action using Hockey TV, log in, or watch games at Buffalo Wings and Rings in Aberdeen, the official home for all Wings Away games. Games audio will be broadcast via Hub City Radio's 94.1 The Rock, or you can download the Rock app and listen anywhere you go. We'll be home to finish out the regular season when the Wings again take on the Norsemen inside the Odie on Friday and Saturday night. April 14th and 15th. Get your tickets online at tickets.aberdeenwings.com. Keep an eye on our social media uh, pages for see what's in store for the final home, home weekend of the regular season. The awards banquet is held at the Yelda Shrine on April 16th. Hope to see you all there. Don't forget, you can listen to Wings Weekly via our podcast. Find the audio for this season's episodes on Spotify, Stitcher, or iHeartRadio. And for all the latest news and information on the Wings, visit aberdeenwings.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or on TikTok. Once again, Landon, Stefan, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to join us here. Thanks for having me. All right, folks, that'll wrap up this week's Wings Weekly.